This is ContactTalkRadio.com. Consciousness in action. And you are taking action into your consciousness by tuning into Contact Talk Radio. And on TuneIn.com, Ying.fm, and Upsnap Mobile. Contact Talk Radio. When was the last time you felt inspired? Are you ready to take your passions to make a difference while living a life you truly love? Your host, Katana Abbott, who is a life and legacy wealth coach and certified financial planner, searches the world to bring you experts in the field of personal and professional growth, wealth creation, and mind, body, and spirit. So grab a cup of coffee and take that quantum leap you've been waiting for. Smart Women Talk Radio. The link to live with purpose, passion, and prosperity. Hello, everyone. This is Katana Abbott, and I want to welcome you to Smart Women Talk, where I search the world for smart women and a few good men. This includes best selling authors, thought leaders, and change agents who are on that leading edge. So our topics include money, business, health, inspiration, and the metaphysical. So today, I am so excited. We are interviewing money mindset mentor, Sandy Forster, about what blocks could be, what could be blocking your abundance. So we're going to talk about some very simple strategies on how to attract abundance, three tips to guarantee success. I bet you like that. (laughs) And how to break through your money blocks. So let me tell you a little bit about Sandy. Um, Sandy Forster is a international speaker, best-selling author, a multi-award winning entrepreneur, and she has transformed her life truly from welfare to millionaire. She's going to tell us all about it. She's been featured alongside Nicole King, King, uh, Kidman with um, Oprah, Oprah's Aussie Secret, and she's recognized as one of the world's leading money mindset coaches, helping women in over 108 countries attract abundance and create a life they are truly passionate about. So Sandy, welcome to Smart Women Talk. Thank you so much for having me, Katana. I'm really pleased to be here. I am really excited. And I'm in Michigan and U.S. and you are? On the beautiful Sunshine Coast in Queensland, Australia. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. And um, right now it is uh, five o'clock here while we're doing this. And I know where you are. It's early, early. So thanks for doing this. I'm an early bird. So yeah, no problem at all. (laughs) Yeah, on the other side of the world. So um, so anyway, this whole idea, you, I mean, this is amazing. You were 100,000 in debt. And um, you were on welfare, and somehow you transformed your life and became a millionaire. So can you tell us about what happened? Because I know everybody would love to know, because it's so miraculous. Yeah. Um, I guess I was really, really lucky, really blessed that, well, let me give you a bit of the backstory. So I used to live in one of the most southern states of Australia. It was very cold. And then we moved to one of the most northern states, Queensland, very warm. But before we did that, my parents decided that we would sell the house and travel the world. And I was 15 at the time. So we traveled the world for 10 months, which was amazing. And then um, came back to Australia, moved to Queensland, and I went to school. And I met a boy in school. We went out for 11 years. I had a six-month-old and a three-year-old, and I had a hobby business at the time. So aerobics was really in, and because I live at the beach, I love swimwear, and I really love sewing. So I used to go and buy all this amazing fabric at the cheap discount store, and then I'd come home and sit in the garage and sew and sew and sew, and then I'd do that all winter. And then come summer, I would find an empty store along the beachfront, and I would set up shop. And I would sell all my bikinis and gym wear. So as I said, it was just a hobby and Mm -hmm. it bought in money so that we could, you know, buy some furniture or um, go on a holiday and just do fun stuff. But then when my daughter was three, my son was six months old, we divorced and uh, suddenly that income had to be 
my entire income and it was not enough. And so mm. I ended up just going further and further into debt and I ended up $100,000 in debt and on welfare. And that was a really, really scary place to be. Okay, so you were 100000 in debt. So what happened? How did you deal with that? Oh, that was the scariest place to be. Um, I don't know. I mean, obviously, a lot of people have debt. But when you're $100,000 in debt and on welfare, you really don't think that there's going to be any change. You don't know how you're going to completely get out of that mess. And for me, I sort of thought, well, if I get a job, I might be able to, um, you know, in the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years, pay off that debt. But I couldn't think of what sort of job I could do because I really wasn't that skilled at anything. You know, I just, I I love sewing and that was fun, but I had to sort of try and turn that business into an actual real business rather than a hobby business. And unfortunately, that was not a good plan. I got an overdraft. I borrowed more money. I just got further and further in debt. And As I said, I ended up $100,000 in debt and on welfare. And at the time, welfare was, in US dollars, it was about um, $7,500 a year. It was like, yes. So so you you can't survive on that. You just keep going backwards further and further. So it was a really, really scary place to be. And I felt really um, stressed. I felt frustrated. I felt ashamed. I felt embarrassed. I felt so many negative emotions around money. And I just literally had no idea how things would change. But I very luckily discovered the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. And I had already understood positive thinking because I, you know, because being in that situation when things are really bad, you're always looking for how to get out of it. So I'd already discovered positive thinking. And I understood that, you know, you should be thinking about what it is you want and having goals and things like that. But I believe law of attraction really takes positive thinking to a whole new level. Mm -hmm. And so when I discovered the law of attraction, which for anyone that's kind of new to that, um, most people these days know what it is. But if you knew, it's basically uh, what you think about, what you focus on, where you put your energy is what you then attract back into your world. Mm -hmm. So when I discovered that, I realized that, yes, while positive thinking, I was definitely thinking how I wanted to be rich and how I wanted to have money and how I wanted to change my circumstances. I also realized that most of the time, I was actually focusing on how much debt I had and how stressed I was and how I'd never be able to get out of debt and how things were so bad. So I realized that, yes, I was thinking positively, but I was also thinking very negatively. And so I realized that I needed to change that. Mm -hmm. And so, so that's exactly what I did. Like to cut a long story short, I learned how to rewire my brain. I learned how to focus on what I wanted. I learned how to um, align body, mind, and spirit so that I was moving toward what I wanted and what I wanted was moving toward me. And yes, I ended up going from welfare to millionaire. And now it's my absolute passion to to show other people, particularly women all around the world, how to how to change their circumstances and become attractive to money instead of chasing it. So are you going to share a little bit about how you did that? Yeah, yeah. So, so are you wanting the practical side or the mindset side? Because <laughs> honestly, there's there's two. Like you can't do one without the other. I think um, I think Wallace Waddle said it best, mm. uh, and he's the one that wrote that book back in 1910 called The Science of Getting Rich. And it's really old language, but there's one sentence in there that I absolutely love. He says, "By thought, the thing you desire is brought to you." but by action, you receive it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of the missing piece for a lot of people. They've, they've maybe watched the secret or read the book or read, you know, maybe my book and they've learned about the law of attraction and they understand that they can attract what they want. They can manifest what they want, but they think that if they sit around and meditate all day long, it's going to drop into their lap. Mm -hmm. Whereas you must take action. So so which ones are you wanting? Which, which little tips are you after? <laughs> oh, um, well, what was, what was it that happened? Because we just love hearing your story. You know, we always love women to share their story. There was something that happened for you, right? There was. So there was a number of things. Like okay. since I discovered the law of attraction, there's many things that have happened 
that are just like, how did that happen? So I'll share a couple of them. Okay. First one was I woke up one morning because I, I, I'd done something that Mark Victor Hansen used to say. He, he used to say, go to sleep at the end of every night and ask yourself a question, like not just yourself, but the universe. Like he used to say, and Mark Victor Hansen is the guy that has sold, like I think it's half a billion books, um, the chicken soup for the soul books. And he used to say, um, bring me a bring me a best-selling title. That's what he used to say before he even came up with the idea for Chicken Soup for the Soul. <laughs> so, so it's like you've just got to ask and it will be given. So I used to go to bed saying, you know, bring me a million-dollar idea, bring me a million-dollar idea. And I woke up one morning with the name Wildly Wealthy Women in my head. So I thought, hmm, I went online and registered it. Had no idea what it was, you know, what I would do with it. But I just love that whole alliteration. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I was actually marketing a course with a um, uh, my she was actually my accountant. Mm -hmm. So my accountant had discovered this this course based on um, very practical money making strategies. Um, and she'd come to me and said, look, I want my clients to know about this, but I don't want to talk to them about it. And I know that you're good at talking to people, you know, let's go into business together. So we kind of started this business and we were marketing this course. And anyway, I woke up with this name in my mind. And about three months later, I went to my business partner and I said, look, I think that with this very practical information that we're sharing with people around building wealth, I would love to teach the mindset. And I think we should start Wildly Wealthy Women and we can have... Um, teleseminars every week and you just you talk about the very practical and I'll talk about the mindset and we'll get together a few times a year and have wildly wealthy women's wicked weekends and we can you know do fun <laughs> stuff like yoga and meditation and create vision boards and walks on the beach and massages and anyway she thought it was a great idea so I went and launched that business I just created a website um, got some media around it launched the business and that business made close to in the in the first four months close to two million dollars just from an idea okay and this is why I'm saying action is so important because I I take action when I don't even know what I'm doing um, I don't have a plan I don't have this big long strategy I just take action and the action um, just allows the universe to bring me more people and situations and opportunities and circumstances to have my dreams my desires come to fruition so I'm, that's why I'm really big on the action. Yes, I'm very big on, on the other steps, you know, aligning um, your mind and your spirit, but body is, you know, you've got to take that action. So that's but, one of the things I did. Well, so I want to ask you, why is it that so many women struggle with creating success, you know, yeah. with creating abundance, you know, because they know about it. You know, a lot of women have seen the secret and they're aware of this and they still struggle. I, yeah, I, I think it, it almost comes back to, and this is an absolute generalization, but it always comes back to caveman days because we're still hardwired for that. Like we still, you know, fight and flight. We're always in that state. Where yeah. Why? We're not being chased by a saber-toothed tiger. Nothing's going to happen to us. But... Going back to caveman days, it was all about the men went out and did the work, like, you know, killed the, the tigers, kept us all safe, um, bought home the meat. Like they, they did that and we were at home nurturing and looking after and caring for. And so we're still not wired to have that success, to go out and do all the doing. And I think that's the problem these days is, Women are trying to be the person that does all the doing, 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 and they're not getting their mind into the whole process. They're not attracting like they could. So men are made to go and do. Women are made to attract. And what's happening is so many women are getting caught up in that. I have to do this and do that and do the social media and do the funnels and do the marketing and do the blah, 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 blah. And they're not stepping back and going, okay, what do I truly want? 
what would I love? How would I love my life to be? And then getting into that place and thinking about that and imagining that that was how it was and imagining that the, their marketing was going beautifully and their business was going gorgeously and they were making an amazing profit. They're not spending time in that place and then attracting things to them to create success. They're getting caught up in the doing, 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 doing. And, you know, that for a woman makes, makes it really challenging. And, it, and a lot of it has to do with our limiting beliefs. Oh, totally, totally. Like, you know, the thing is, the thing I love about, uh, I guess, the internet and social media and everything that's out there now, it, it's a good and a bad. Mm-hmm. The bad is everyone's kind of comparing each other with everyone else and looking at what someone else has done and sometimes feeling less than and like, oh my gosh, jealousy, I can't do that. But the good side of it is that we've got all these wonderful role models all these women that are out there creating amazing success. And I think women need to really use that as a catalyst for creating more. When you look at all the women out there that are creating success and and listening to something like this that you've put together, which is amazing, then what happens is the more you listen to and learn and get inspired by others rather than feeling separated from that, but look at them as if, oh, wow, that person's done that. I could do that too. The more you get into that energy, then the more you're able to actually create that success. So I think we live in a really great time that as long as you use other people's successes as kind of a springboard for your own, it can really serve you well. You know, it's interesting too, um, sometimes you'll look at someone who's very successful and then feel envious. And then, um, you know, that's not good because if you're envious, then you're never going to have that yourself, right? Exactly. And, um, pardon? Exactly. You, you need exactly. to say that, and, and this is from Deborah Ponum, and she goes, that's for me, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know? So when you see the friend who just got something that you want or a, a business owner who launched a program, you know, to get excited and say, that's great and be excited for that person and say, I'm getting that too. I, exactly, you know. exactly. Because it's almost like the universe is showing you what's possible. So instead of seeing something that's amazing that you would love to have instead of feeling separate you can just do you know say exactly what you said or yes thank you very much as if you're getting it yourself because then you're setting up your energy your vibration to be able to attract that thing into your life so you know i would like to ask you about um this idea of prosperity because i always say you know i don't know if you know i'm a certified financial planner for 30 years (laughs) Okay. (laughs) You're on the practical side. (laughs) Well, you know what? I could not wait to retire at 48 to come do my passion project, which is this nonprofit with smart women and um, also my coaching business that I do. And I've always said that prosperity is more than money. It's health, wealth, and happiness. So why is it that we struggle with prosperity? Um, Again, I think it comes back to, you know, and again, this is a complete generalization, but, but women, women are used to from decades ago being looked after. And so that whole point of us having to get out there and make the money um, is can be really challenging. And I know as a single mum, like, you know, I was divorced when my children were, as I said, six months old and three years old. It was so challenging to be the mum, to be the person who looked after the house, to be the person who who cooked all the meals, to be the person who provided all the the finances. It was it's right. really, really can be really, really challenging. And a lot of women just simply aren't kind of up to the game. It can be just too much. And they spend too much time in that male energy instead of that female energy, that attracting energy. So so really it's about understanding, yes, you've got goals. Yes, you've got things you want to create and attract into your world. And yes, you have to take action steps because, as I said, that's really part of the process. But spend more time thinking about what it is you want to create and thinking about it as if you have already created it, thinking about it as if it's already in your life and and getting into the feeling place of that because that's going to allow you to attract things to you rather than chase them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. 
And, um, you know, they talk about um, vision boards and you mentioned it yourself. And I think it's so important to, when you get clear, you know, put it down on paper and, and look at it every day or, you know, create it in a visual and like you said, and focus on it and get excited about it. And, and sometimes it's really hard to even do that, to actually visualize because you can't even think it's possible. Yeah, and, and that can be a real block because particularly if you've got no money and then you've got to try and think of having money, it can be like, well, I've never been in that situation. And I always say to my clients, well, okay, I, I like to give them a little example. So when I was, oh, I don't know, very young, we used to go and stay at my grandmother's house down by the beach. And I remember digging in the sand. And if you dug in the sand and found a coin, oh my gosh, talk about feeling rich, like <laughs> feeling like so abundant, like it was in, unbelievable. So I say to my clients, you know, when I say, think of a time when you felt rich, it's not about think of a time when you had a million dollars in the bank. It's about how you felt. It's just that feeling. And it could be that you just found a coin on the sidewalk or, you know, someone sent you $5 that you, you'd forgotten you'd lent them. Like it could be something really little. But in that moment, that feeling of abundance, if you can tap into that feeling and then grow that feeling and then think about those things you want to bring into your life while you're feeling those feelings, mm -hmm. again, that helps you to become more magnetic to them. So, so, and I agree. And, and when you, when you started the, your business, you know, I'd love to hear, you know, some of your great days and then some, what were some of your ups and downs that you faced? And then, you know, how did you navigate that? Cause I think that's important. Yeah. How do you navigate so, good times? How do you navigate bad times? Bad right? times. <laughs> yeah. The good times, honestly, some of the good times have been amazing. I remember, I remember once, I don't even know what was happening. So you're, you're the financial planner. You understand the practical side. I understand the metaphysical side and the manifesting, but the practical still kind of eludes me slightly. So I remember sitting down, um, trying to explain to my bookkeeper once about something about, I just feel like there's some money missing somewhere. I just, I just feel like I don't know, you know, where some of the money that I've made has gone. And then logging into my PayPal account mm -hmm. and... <laughs> <laughs> logging into my PayPal account and finding $700,000 there that I didn't actually realize was there. <laughs> Where was it in the PayPal? It was in there, but I, I, this was when I first started using PayPal and I didn't really understand. <laughs> yeah. So I just didn't, I didn't ever log in. I didn't use it. I knew we linked it up, but I didn't actually know where it was or that you had to get it and then put it into your bank account. I just thought money in my bank account was what was in my bank account. So and you're going to be making nice. money in the stock market. <laughs> yeah. So it was like, I thought, oh, that's a bit nice. Like there was that money all sitting there that I didn't even know about. So that was kind of a good day. Um, but, oh, the challenging side, oh, my gosh, I can't even begin to tell you the amount of challenging things that have happened for me in my business. Um, the thing about business is it, someone once said something like it's the, you'll, you'll go through the biggest personal growth ever when you've got your own business. Mm -hmm. And I totally agree with that. It is, can, there can be days it's so challenging and there's been days where I have just cried I just like I just want to go and live on a desert island and pack the business in like I'm just over it but um I think I think for me the biggest challenge was I've had um employees and people that have worked for me that have um taken some of my work and then gone off and and kind of taught it and that that to me has been challenging um mainly because I've always thought that people will work with me or for me, um, whether they were, you know, contractors or whether they were employees. I kind of feel like they're friends. Right. And so that in the past was really challenging. But you know what? Whenever something happens in my business that's challenging, it causes me to step up and, and look at it and then, and then know how to deal with it in the future. So those things never happen anymore because I make people sign um, contracts and agreements that, you know, say that there's non-compete or they can't be doing anything in my space kind of thing. So anything that does happen in my business and, you know, a business is business and there's always good and there's always bad. 
um, it just helps me to kind of streamline things and get things clear and set up terms and conditions and, and, you know, really know what works, which can be really challenging for someone like myself, who I feel still to this day, that I'm not really a business person. I'm more just a creative person who happens to do something that makes me money. So therefore it's called a business. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and you've made so much money. I mean, like an abnormal amount of money. And um, and I mean, it's from my creativity. It's not from anything else. Like I've got online um, products and programs. And, and basically what I do is I just share what worked for me. Like, you know, I, I share how I went from welfare to millionaire. I share all my processes. I share what I did to, to break through. I share what all the ways that, you know, you can align that body, mind and spirit. I just share what worked for me. And that just happens to be my business. And as I said, you know, taking the, those practical steps and taking action right. is what really can make the difference. Because let me, if you've got time, I'd love to give you another example of when I yeah. took action that made money. So when The Secret first came out, I oh, had yeah, already I written that. my book. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'd already written my book, How to Be Wildly Wealthy Fast. Wait, 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 I want to show. Oh, does I have it on my Kindle. <laughs> And it's wonderful. So I have it right on my phone, and and I and I hope you get it on Audible because I would Audible love... coming soon. Audible coming yes, soon. <laughs> because it's so much fun to have someone reading to you while you're driving, while you're walking. I know. You know I, I do um like a you know it's a energy thing that that's like you know twenty minutes on this bed that's doing all these different things. So I love to do my book on audio and have it read to me. And when they have a, a good reader that really knows your voice, oh, it's wonderful. It's like a loving friend being there. So I, I think your book would be perfect for that. So I'll keep All on. right. I, pro- I promise you by the end of next month, it will be there. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's already recorded. I just don't oh. have it up there. So oh, wow. I'm ready to go. Oh, fantastic. So tell us about this. I think it's something to do with the secret. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So That's this such was an another story. Uh, yeah, another story that just proves that when you take action, amazing things can happen. So <sighs> I, I got an email about this thing called the secret, and I saw this little two or three minute trailer and thought, oh, I just got this feeling that I just felt like my gosh, that's so in alignment with what I do. And as I said, I'd already written How to Be Wildly Wealthy Fast, which was all about the law of attraction, all about manifesting money. But I just felt like this movie was going to be amazing, but I couldn't buy it. You weren't allowed to buy it in Australia until it aired on TV. They had some sort of um, contract that they could not sell to Australia. So even though in the trailer it said nothing about the law of attraction, I just felt like, there was just such alignment with what I did. So I thought to myself, I'm going to write to the secret people because I just had a feeling, just a feeling that that movie was going to make a huge difference to the world. I just felt like it was going to reach people because a book, you know, some people read books, some people don't, but everyone loves to watch a movie. Like everyone just loves sitting back, chilling, watching a movie. So I just knew it was going to reach so many people, even though I hadn't seen it. So I sent an email to the secret website and I got an email back from Rhonda Byrne. He said, (laughs) we get so many emails. That's very unusual, you know. (laughs) I know. She said, we get so many emails. I don't know how I got yours, but yes, I'd love a secret. I'd love a present because I'd said in the email, I'd love to send you a gift. She said, yes, I'd love a gift. So she gave me her address. I posted um, my book, How to Be Wildly Wealthy Fast. I posted um, a course that I had. And at the time, it was like a home study printed off course, Millionaire Mindset. Sent her that. And she emailed me back and said, oh, thank you so much. Did you watch The Secret and then write your book? And I said, no, I haven't even seen The Secret yet. She said, oh, my gosh, it's so in alignment. Like, it's exactly what the movie's all about. And so she actually sent me the movie and then we had a secret party at my house and I had all my friends around and we watched The Secret and like the first time in Australia, it was so exciting. Wow. But then I'm still in communication with Rhonda and I said, you know, why can't you sell it in Australia? You know, we've got this thing, we just can't until it goes onto TV. I said, how long is that going to be? She said, "I, I don't know, you know, 
we don't know until it airs. We had it all lined up, but it's not happening. So I said, well, can't someone else in America sell to Australia? She said, sure, but we can't. And I said, well, well, I've got a US company. Could I? She said, we can sell to a US company and then you can do what you want. So as it turned out, me who knows nothing about importing and exporting, knows nothing about distributing a product, you know, in bulk like that, knows nothing about the taxes coming in and out, like literally knows absolutely zero about the whole process, says, I'll do it. And um, so I stepped up, did it, and that idea alone just to send an email initially because I didn't send the email thinking how can I make money out of this I just sent the email you know I just wanted to thank them um and that one email alone ended up making me close to three million dollars in less than a year so I imported you had to have a team did you go to your CPA and say help me do this and let's no no I, I, I'm I, the lone wolf. I never ask anyone for help. I just do it all myself. I just figure it out as I go. So, yeah, I just, just did it and, um, yeah, figured it all out. And next thing I know, I'm distributing the secret all around Australia. And, and also, you know, obviously I have people on my database from all around the world. So we were selling Australia all around the world. And it was, and it was a product that was in huge demand when it first came out. So, Yeah, it was just one of those things. And that's why I'm so big and say, yes, absolutely. You've got to do all the mindset work. You've got to, you've got to feel that you've attracted what it is you desire. You've got to, to think about those things that you want to create, but you've got to take action. And the thing is, that's one of the things that stops women though. They're limiting. So they get everything all perfect. And then, then it's like, but yeah, but. but. I, and then you know what if what if and and they stop and the universe goes oh okay you don't really want that now <laughs> what? exactly but one of the things I teach people one of the things I love to teach is we're all taught ready aim fire so ready you know come up with the idea aim get everything perfect get it all aligned get all your ducks in a row and then fire get started I teach slightly differently I teach ready fire get going aim fix tweak improve later so that um because i know from my own experience i'm one of those people that would be stuck in procrastination and perfectionism forever stuck in the what ifs what if this doesn't work out what if that's not quite right what if what it's like i would be stuck there forever so i follow that process to ready fire then aim well, because of course, what you just told us. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. exactly. I mean, so tell us about this idea of being fearless, you know, um, versus courage. I mean, it sounds like this ready, uh, you said ready, fire, aim. That that has to do with courage and has to do with being fearless. I think. But trusting. And also, is there a okay. sense of trust? You know what? I think it's just been a little bit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't even know that it's being that fearless or that you know having courage I think it's just sometimes me being just not based in reality and just doing stuff without thinking it through and and you know how you said the ups and downs in business that same uh process has made me make some stupid mistakes sometimes so you know I know it, it, it sounds like I'm just this courageous, amazing person who does stuff and fearless, but no, I think it's more that I just don't think things through sometimes and I just do it. And sometimes things work out amazingly and sometimes they don't. So, <laughs> so what about women who, you know, and I've, I've had huge failures before, just like you were saying, right? And let's say they, they've had a huge failure, you know, they've lost money, maybe they've even filed bankruptcy. And, um, you know, they're going along on this path. You know, what, what I really want to believe is that we're all on this path and that you just have to trust that all this that you're going through is, is, has a purpose. And you just need to trust the process because perhaps there's something else waiting for you or you need more, you need a contact who's not ready yet, <laughs> you know, and then all of a sudden it can go just like that, like you showed us. Yeah, yeah. So just and, like and that I think, 
that can kind of come from two angles. So the first, the first angle is what can sometimes happen is when people understand the law of attraction, they first learn about it, they get all excited and they're focusing on what they want and they think about it and they're, they're really putting their energy there and their thoughts there and they're really getting kind of magnetic to what they want and they start to attract things into their life. And then they kind of, they attract those dreams and goals and then they kind of settle. They start, they sort of, the, the, the tension, if you will, but that good tension, that magnetic tension kind of goes away because they've attracted what they want. And so suddenly, because that energy in, isn't there, then the magnetizing stops and then kind of it can all go away. So that actually, the first part of that is that you need to continually have bigger and better goals, continually, continually, continually. It's not that we're being greedy. It's not that we, we're trying to have more than our share. It's just that life is all about expansion and growth. And part of that is being the best you can, you can be, living the best life you can live, creating the most abundance, because, you know, obviously the more abundance you have, yes, it's good for you, but it also helps others too. You spend oh. more, you help businesses, you can give more to charities. It's, it's just, it, it all goes around. So that's part of the, the thing that happens when people um, bring money into their life and then it kind of disappears again. That's, that's one part of it. But the other side is um, you've got to, on a practical level, you've got to continue to, as I said, have those goals, but you've got to continue to take action because too many people, it's almost like when you, when you achieve that goal, you sort of feel like you're done and People don't often take that next step and have that. So before you even achieve a goal, think of the next goal and constantly. And the thing is, people don't think of enough goals. This is the big thing. When it comes to goals, understand that often people come up with one thing that they really want and they focus on that and they dream about that and they think about that. But understand the more things you want to bring into your life. And I say, sit down, write a list of at least a hundred things i'm talking big goals little goals tiny goals you want some new candles you want some new cushions you want some new linen you want your own house you want a car you want like you want to travel the world big little in between everything just write out as many goals as you can because the more that you have the more the universe has to work with and it means that when you're thinking about all those different things you're always lighting up from the inside out. You're always getting excited. You're always kind of got that magnetizing energy about you. But if you've only got one goal, then what happens is you might be feeling really excited about it one day, but the next day you might be feeling like it's not going to happen. And so that excitement goes, that magnetizing energy goes, and the universe has got nothing to work with. But when you've got lots and lots of goals, then, and you're always thinking about it and you've got, you know, pictures on your vision board and you've, reading affirmations about it and you're visualizing it then there's so much for the universe to work with and so the the chance that you're going to begin and continue to keep manifesting is very high so this is all so exciting and you know we're coming towards the end of the show and and i would love for you to share um what, what would be a smart women tip that you'd like to share with our listeners i think there's there's Three things. First thing, get really clear on what it is that you want and set the intention that you are going to create this amazing life with this, you know, whatever it happens to be that you truly want in it. Secondly, find yourself a mentor, someone who's already created the success that you want and then follow their lead. Like why waste all the time and effort and energy and money trying to figure it all out yourself like me <laughs> find someone who's already done what it is that you do and follow their lead then uh, thirdly don't just learn and listen and get inspired take action you have to take action without the action piece then you know yes you might take a few steps forward but you're really not going to create the success that you want unless you take action and then the last last piece, this is number four, extra tip, um, be persistent. Know that if you have a dream or a desire or a goal, know that the universe wants more for you than you could ever want for yourself. 
And so knowing that the universe is there supporting you, it's not you trying to go out there and make it all happen. Allow the universe to support you by really tapping in and using as many metaphysical processes as you can to actually have you stepping toward what you want by taking action, but the universe bringing what it is to you because you're becoming magnetized to it. So mm. if you follow those four steps, then honestly, and I like to say to people, just understand I'm, I'm no one special. Like I dropped out of high school in grade 11. I did not even finish high school. I had no connections, no one with money, no one that could help me. I had no great skills. I had nothing. And so I figure if I've been able to completely transform my life, you then have. everyone <laughs> can too. It's wonderful. I mean, you're such a great role model. Well, thank you. Thank you so I much, Katana. You know, it's exciting. And, you know, I have three tips and, I, and, and it's very similar. It's amazing because I, I didn't use the clear part, but having a mentor and finding a community, women that will support you and never, ever giving up is mine. Beautiful. Yeah, very similar. Excellent. They're on the same path. John Maxwell says it takes 10 years or 10,000 hours to become an expert so you can borrow it. And my um, first mentor was just the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And mm-hmm. it pulled me out of a very dark spot and I found my burning desire and it led me here. So beautiful. You know, yeah. Life. So I love that. So let's tell everyone how they can connect with you. And I, and I um, know you have some wonderful, wonderful bonus gifts for anyone who visits you. I do. So I have put together a manifesting bundle. It's got a guided visualization, some affirmations, things that are going to help to start to rewire your mind. And you can get that at wildlywealthyfree.com. So wildlywealthyfree.com. But if you just want to check me out, you can um, find out more about me at my website, wildlywealthy.com. So we will share this with everyone on our social media too. Beautiful. And I will too. (laughs) <laughs> so it's been so wonderful having you here i really thank you so much your time and getting well you already were up so it doesn't matter <laughs> yeah thanks so much i really appreciate it and i love what you're doing and, and really helping women to see what's possible and understand that you know as we talked about before the more women hear other people doing great things the more their belief builds and when their belief builds then their manifesting abilities build too wow. Yeah. Oh, great. So thank you for being here. And and I want to invite everyone to please come and visit um, Smart Women's Academy and our nonprofit Smart Women's Empowerment. You'll get our newsletter. You'll know who our guests are. You'll get their articles and summits and free gifts. And um, you'll also get um, my book, the five biggest money mistakes women make. So we've got all kinds of goodies for you. So just visit joinsmartwomen.com. And don't forget to come back in two weeks when we have our next guest on this topic. And until then, go out and live with more purpose, passion, and prosperity. Thank you for joining us here at Smart Women Talk Radio, a place to learn, prosper, and grow. Tune in again next week for another exciting episode of Smart Women on the CTR Network. And remember to live with purpose, passion, and prosperity.